दीपावली प्रस्तुति को आज को यो सिंखला में तो बार सब लाए मो फादर एलेक्जेंडर गुरुं को तरफ बाटा जिस बड़ाई र आज आमेरो ये सेरी बनाऊं सात समुंदर पारी उड़ेरा और यहाँ ऑस्ट्रेलिया में सों र ये सेरी घूमते फिरते माले यहाँ निरा एक जना आ आमेरो दीदी को साथ ही लाए बेटे जिसको अति नहीं आ इंटरेस्टिंग आई आकुरा आरुमाले वहाँ बड़ा सुन पाए वहाँ संग को बार दलाब मा अन्य वाले आ इंडिया में आये रा दस पॉइंट आये रा आई वाले वहाँ योगा को तालिम ले रा वहाँ यहाँ इले योगा को गुरु पने उन्होंने सा अन्य वहाँ स्वयं ले वड़ा आ किताब पन लिखने लागो सा रो एकदम ही देरे देरे आ इंटरेस्टिंग कु राज वहाँ से ना कोई वार्तालाप तो पाया रहा हूँ आह मो देखा होना चांस हो ये सर यो पैम्बुला दिस प्लेस इस नॉन एस पैम्बुला बीच पैम्बुला बीच आ जरूरी है इसको छोव माई और वहाँ से ना कोई वार्तालाप मो शुरू करना चांस हो रहा फर्स्ट एंड फॉर्मस वेलकम टू आर शो लीजा थैंक यू एंड इट वाज रियली इट्स Hundred of talent bundled in one. Uh, so, <laughs> like, you. I would like to just uh, start this uh, interview uh, talking about you, uh, your upgrowing, and uh, a little bit about yourself, please. So, I'm Australian uh, by birth. I grew up in Melbourne, uh, but when I was uh, had finished my secondary studies and I was about to go to university. I decided to go and spend a winter living in the ski resort in Victoria. Oh, okay. And I got a position as a trainee ski instructor. So that was a very exciting year. And then uh, what happened is I would then decided to take another year off university. And they call this, these days they call it a gap year. So now I consider, I actually haven't made it to university yet, I call it a gap life. So I've studied in the University of Life. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I've, uh, right. Discovered things that interest me out in the world, and I've um, carried on skiing for full time for about twenty years. Became a professional skier. Mm, okay. So I also came to know one thing. You know, like in our part of the world, also, like we have many young uh, girls and boys coming and uh, working with us. So they call themselves gap students. So I yes. actually I didn't understand what is gap. I yeah. Was, so it's that one year that you take between secondary and tertiary school. I was thinking it is a kind of an acronym. No. Uh, abbreviation no, no. for yeah. something. Yeah. So thank you. Yes. Because I came to know what is this gap. <laughs> they so, didn't call it yeah. that when I was younger, but it's become a something that children do to help. Okay. You know, so talking about education. skiing, I have just uh, this like I was just uh, trying to know. Uh, more about you, so I was just googling. Then I came to know that you are a very, I mean, you are an accomplished, uh, what you call, uh, skier. So uh, let's start by sharing some of your skiing adventures. Well, it was a complete accident that I became a professional skier, and there isn't really, or there wasn't in that in the years I was skiing a profession as a professional skier. I just basically made my living from doing what I love. First, I was a ski teacher. Okay. Then I became a competitor, almost by accident, uh, and I ended up skiing on the Australian ski team as a mogul skier for four years. Uh -huh. Towards the end of that time, I encountered, or I was invited to go and work for a ski photographer, and that was in Switzerland, and that was a two-week uh, position. And I've been there for over thirty years. Oh, so that two weeks turned two into weeks thirty turned years. Two weeks turned into thirty. <laughs> yeah. So. And you have, you, as you were sharing, you are basically half settled there, half settled here. Uh, That's what you said. Yeah. So after living in Switzerland for thirty years, I have to admit I am now a reformed skier. I'm almost allergic to snow. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be cold. I don't want to have to lug all that gear around. So now I've moved to the beach. Okay. 
and uh, making up for all those years. So I spent many years where I would have a winter in the northern hemisphere and a winter in the southern hemisphere. So it's winter for you throughout the year? For seven <laughs> years I did that, exactly. Yeah. Most people would think it's the biggest nightmare uh -huh. they can have. Winter but for you throughout. Yeah, yeah. So I have lived 42 winters in ski resorts. Oh. So I, I, this is only recently that I haven't lived in a ski resort and I chose this place. Yeah, okay. so since we are just here, mm. uh, I wouldn't be the right person to actually tell what these uh, beaches, uh, which beach is this? So, we're looking across at Marimbula. Okay. And the beach uh, has a broad sweep, it's five kilometers long and it has different names along different parts of the beach. This area at the southern end is called Pambula Beach and here we're surrounded by National Park. So native forests. Yeah. We went to and, that park yesterday. Yeah, and there's a river, beautiful river here, and an ocean. So it's a really hidden away, secluded part of uh, the world. <clears throat> and I chose this place partially because of its beauty. Yeah. Also because it's halfway between Sydney and Melbourne. So okay. it's, it's relatively quiet. In fact, I was about to ask this yeah. question, you yeah. know, yeah. since I, uh, I had come, this is my third visit to Australia. So I had stayed in Sydney when I first came, mm -hmm. even in my second visit I was in Sydney and suddenly this time we came 600, <laughs> 600 kilometers this side and I was thinking that. So I was just about to ask you, what made you choose this place? Also, That's pretty funny, I came here to visit a friend, I'd never been to this village before, I was here for five days, I was still living in Switzerland full time and I came here and I said, I'm moving here. I'm buying a house here. Mm -hmm. Partially, I had been looking at buying property in Australia so that I could be away for the winter, European winter, but further north. And when I came here, I just fell in love with the place. So it was a heart. I, I went, went home and sold my house. Just just was a heart decision. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, so actually, given your kind of uh, personality or given uh, you like place which is serene and uh, yes, yes so coming to this i would like to ask you a other question which i have in mind uh it's very it was very interesting to know that uh, you uh, have done or you have had lessons or whatever you would be the best person to talk to me about that and now you are a yoga instructor yes right yeah so like you've been to india uh possibly 10 times is it uh uh, yoga instructor or visiting India? Visiting you said. India. So, no, yes, yes. Like now I'll keep yeah. quiet. Yes. <laughs> uh, I just want to uh, know from the horse's mouth, as I said, your yoga journey. Uh, what uh, what was that it uh, made you go uh, through this journey? What uh, interested you? Okay. Uh, perhaps some philosophy. It's of a long life. story. I'll make it as short as right. possible. Okay, please. <laughs> yes. So. Uh, in Australia, there was an Indian woman who used to run a TV program in the days when we had black and white TV. Oh. And I remember sitting with my mom on the floor in the living room when I was three or four, doing yoga with her. And when we did yoga, it was the first time in my life I could do something my mother couldn't do. Oh. And I fell in love with it. Okay. But then I forgot. I always had it at the back of the mind as it was something fascinating. Um, I'll sip tea as I hear you. Okay? Lovely, yes, because right. it's a long story. Okay. So, <laughs> then when I was competing in skiing, the type of skiing I did gives made a lot of impact on your back and body. <laughs> and so I started using yoga asana as a tool to help me um, maintain my strength and flexibility. And I did that for about 15 years. Because I was very serious about competition, I would practice regularly. And then... Uh, it was more or less by accident. I was visiting a um, the west coast of Australia, okay. and I went to a yoga class, my first yoga class. And I was also going through some life changes. I'd been married, and we were not we were separating. And um, I was looking for a bit of a new future. In my first yoga class, I said to myself, "This is so amazing. I want." to teach this to people so mm. I can share this fantastic experience. So, oh, so it yeah. just grabbed me. So that was in 2000, 2000 so 24 years ago. So mm. since then, 
I decided to practice more and more yoga and started going to courses and then did a teacher training 20, 21 years ago and uh, then started teaching and have done more trainings and, and now I actually teach um, mainly in China. I know it sounds a bit odd but I work with a, uh, an old teacher of mine uh, working on training yoga teachers and um, so now I've moved up to the next level and I've worked in Europe doing that, in Australia and uh, Asia, Bali, and also in Rishikesh. Oh, okay, Rishikesh. So I thought that was pretty exciting to go to the, like, the one of the great spiritual mm -hmm. centers of India and teach yoga. It was all to Westerners because the Western style of yoga is still very much directed towards asana, some meditation, some pranayama, but it takes a long time for people to open up, in general, to open mm -hmm. up to the more traditional spiritual aspect of yoga. Uh, but I hope that by for students who are presented with the incredible transformations that come from the first practices, that they'll be encouraged to move deeper into the the deep, deep spiritual path that yoga offers. Uh, okay, like oh, you've been to Rishikesh, of course, that's a yeah. place which is very uh, famous. Mm. In fact, uh, we also have one of our, I wouldn't say friend, but one of our nun who is known as Bandana Mataji. She also has a, a kind of a school. Of, An ashram? Or yeah, ashram, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, I hear. Yeah. Since uh, then, of course, Rishikesh is famous. As Beatles also went there. Yes, yep. yes. It's a lovely place. Uh, and like, uh, okay, fine. So you developed uh, a kind of a lifestyle, a kind of a philosophy of your own after uh, getting deep into yoga. Yes. Well, after I first get finished uh, skiing professionally, I actually trained as a natural therapist. So oh, okay. I have a diploma in herbal medicine and shiatsu and massage. And I've studied some other alternative therapies. So I um, ended up opening a massage center in the ski resort where I lived in Switzerland and ran that. And then I started working with yoga and I loved the way the healing of therapy and mm -hmm. the yoga interact because the type of healing work I do, people it can work with mental and emotional problems. And yoga can too in many ways. And so it's a great crossover to uh -huh. work with those together. It's a good... So, Assortment or amalgamate. Yes, way. yeah, yeah. It's a very good mix and they complement each other and, and support each other. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's a very deep path. And just this morning I was talking to one of my students who was saying to me, it makes me want to cry, it was so special, that she can't believe how the practice of yoga just goes deeper and deeper and deeper. And I said, it doesn't stop. It just You just keep opening and expanding and your inner knowledge grows. It's, it's as though you access your inner guru. Mm. Mm? It's getting into your consciousness. Or exactly. Your, yeah. It's, yeah. it's meditation actually, isn't it? Meditation is a huge part of yoga. Yes, mm. it's basically, I mean, it's so many things it's impossible to even describe it. But uh, it's about learning to cultivate your mind to a point where instead of the mind being master, you become a master of your mind. In the same way in the West we have a tendency to strengthen our physical body. And perhaps even people are looking now more towards the internal digestion and balance of hormones. I love it that in my experience of the Indian culture, there's also this concept of developing the quality in the mind mm -hmm. of uh, choosing your thoughts. Yeah. Uh, okay, I just wanted to ask like, uh, okay, there are many other disciplines also, no? Like, okay, what I mean to say is like, which has almost the same uh, same purpose or same goal. So like, uh, like the Kashintoism or any other uh, Vipassana. Yes, yes. Uh, there are so many others. But uh, what would you say, like, uh, basically, is the uh, basic aspect uh, of, of, or the modus operandi is the same in all kind of... I think 
most spiritual traditions around the world that haven't been uh, overcome by a tradition that's stifled them are drawn towards cultivating inner consciousness. Okay. I think that's virtually the definition of the pure aspect of religion, isn't it? You working as a priest yourself, you would understand that you're you're not layering things on top of people, you're helping them to take oh, away yeah. and reveal their inner beauty and their inner self. Yeah. And I think that many traditions have that in common. As Socrates says, know thyself. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. that's what yeah that's what we um, basically call uh, what self consciousness or awareness. Awareness. Yes. Uh, this this is yes. the word I want. Yes. It's a, and it's an endless path. It's uh, and it's so subtle and you know. So being uh, like uh, practicing yoga and uh, is is this what led to uh, you to become a hundred percent uh, orthodox vegan? Uh, partially, yes. I actually became vegetarian when I was a ski competitor because uh. I was looking for every single advantage that I could to create a tool, my body was a tool, to um, be working at its best uh, ultimate, optimum level. So I was a vegetarian for, I think about 30 years, Okay. due to my physical health. And then uh, I wanted to become vegan, but I thought it would be too hard. And then at one stage I was invited to test for a month. During a yoga teacher training, we, we encourage our students to forego animal food and flesh because it helps to raise the quality of the vibration in your body when you're eating uh, finer foods, not those dense, heavy, processed foods. So uh, after trying it for a month, I was hooked. Oh, okay. So it suits me on every level, environmentally, particularly, spiritually, um, di the, the food is delicious. Uh, and of course, morally, as far as this whole concept of speciesism is, of we're us thinking we're the superior species and just exploiting others, I find that new concept that's coming in. We had racism, now it's become species wow. speciesism. I so, think it's very yeah. necessary now. Yeah, so uh, it suits me on every level. Okay. And here we are eating the most delicious vegan cake. Yeah, but vegan tea. <laughs> yes. You know, like okay, after having this. Uh, Having talking of, uh, spoken about your skiing, uh, yoga, now I'd like to come like to the most interesting thing. Uh, actually, what really wanted me to have this day to date with you is uh, when I first when I came in, my sister told me like tomorrow Lisa is coming. She has uh, written a book, and I took a photo with you the other day. Yes, and I had uploaded it. Uh, in my uh, Facebook with your permission then one of my friends from Delhi says what I have this book no really I'm seriously you, I, I can I can show you they got it on it, Kindle it, uh, I don't know where he got it um, that's I, fantastic he yeah, just um, what's his name no okay seeing is believing <laughs> sorry <laughs> So it's because he had seen your photo or he'd already got it separately? He know? had already got a... Uh, no, he just wrote, this book is wow, I have it, he wrote. So I am well, very happy that at least it's... Uh, in the meantime, I get it. No, where is it? I can find it somewhere. Well, if you say it, Alex, you're a priest, I believe you. <laughs> but but he, he wrote, I, actually I was trying to help him where you get it. Then he says, I have it already. So let's come to this uh, book, Divine Secret. Fine. Now, as I say, again, I leave you to speak. You are the author. Uh, uh, I'll just give you four questions. Okay. First okay. and foremost, what? Uh, how did you get up the idea of writing uh, a book, a novel? I'm, 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 I'm asking you a second question. Like, okay, what basically this uh, the plot is all about? You can speak anything. As I say, okay. facts are sacred, opinions are free. <laughs> okay. okay. So, uh, well, it's a lot of opinions in there. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen. And what are facts? Things uh, yeah, that might I, be disproved yeah. later now, on. Now, I keep quiet again. Oh. Uh, so, this is a, a book, Divine Secrets by Lisa Nicholas. And I'm in conversation with her uh, in this beautiful country. 
uh, in this beautiful place. Uh, and of course, this is my first uh, interview abroad. How brilliant! Yeah, aren't I honoured? <laughs> so now, uh, uh, as we say, the quote is yours. So, as far as wanting to write, since my twenties, okay, I've been wanting to become a writer. But two things stopped me doing it then. A, I was hopeless at sitting still. And I know you have to sit still to write. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And B, I thought, well, what do I have to share if I have no life experience? So I used the fact that I wanted to be a writer as an excuse to create the most interesting life I could. Okay. So I would have many different experiences and um, basically different experiences to be able to draw into my work later on and create a richer experience for readers. That was my theory. Okay. I thought I would do it when I was older. I've discovered that I actually haven't managed to get older. I just look older on the outside. <laughs> so, That's the yoga working on you. Yes, yes. So, uh, but I did notice that my hair was changing color and I thought, oops, if I'm going to write, I'd better start doing it now because you mentioned I've got many different uh, experiences. So I've noticed in life, so I was a professional skier, then a therapist and a yoga teacher. I noticed it takes about 10 years to get good enough at something to really consider that you know what you're doing. So I thought, okay, if I want to write a book when I'm 60, I better start studying when I'm 50. Okay. So, I, actually, so I did a lot of online courses through uh, mainly English universities, specific uh, writing courses through Oxford, Cambridge, and another one in East Anglia, University of East Anglia. So I think I've done about a hundred weeks of study. Okay. So basically about two years, but always online. And uh, and then through the courses, you're given exercises and you begin to develop certain uh, concepts. And so one of my goals of writing is to disguise in a novel form where you're interested to read. Um, the deepest philosophies of yoga. So I actually, I want them to be an educational tool mm -hmm. without appearing so. Okay. It's what one of the beta readers, one of the people who read the book before it was published, called incidental learning. Oh. So you don't mean to learn it, but by the time you finish the book, you might be thinking, hey, how something. about I look at this situation this way? So I don't know if it'll work. It's my first try. Uh, and so not only do I have that incidental learning as regards uh, deep yoga uh, philosophy, without it being like it's not boring, it's just very simple things that are explained in perhaps a way that readers might not have uh, uh, perceived an event before. So I'm also fascinated by the ancient Sumerian culture, what they call the Fertile Crescent, where... Uh, virtually overnight humanity in that area went from living in the Stone Age to having an extremely advanced culture that included mathematics, writing, irrigation, domestication mm -hmm. of crops, metallurgy, weaving. I mean, m most of the things that are the base of our civilization today yeah. originated there. Even the concept of 360 degrees in a circle. Mm -hmm. So they're the ones who used to use 60 as their base number, and okay. that still exists in our culture today. Plus, the Sumerians um, established the civ well, probable, according to the old text, that they had established the Harappan civilization Harappan. in Wonders eastern, Harappan, Harappan, in eastern yeah. India. Yeah. yeah. So when I was in Delhi, the time I went to Rishikesh recently, I went especially to the museum to have a look at the Harappan uh, okay. culture. So, um, and the one you are uh, mentioning now basically is what we call Indus Valley civilization, is it? Yes, oh, okay. yes, yes. The very that yeah. early, very advanced civilization yeah. in that area, which had a lot of parallels with the uh, Sumerian Mesopotamian civilization. So everybody knows about Egypt, but this came pre-Egypt okay. and it didn't have as you know many fancy masks and pyramids, but it was an extremely advanced civilization for its time. And so there are a lot of theories around that we are not the only um, inhabitants of this vast universe we live in. Okay. 
So what I have done is taken some of those theories and included them in the novel as well. Once again, in the hope that if I plant a seed of a certain thought, people might become more interested and start to investigate themselves and look beyond the kind of blinkered teaching that our world uh, has a tendency to share, start to open up their uh, mind to greater concepts. And uh, I don't know, I don't have any proof, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm pretty sure we're not alone. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I've melded these different uh, aspects into the book, the yogic concepts, the concept of the ancient Sumerian culture, the concept that perhaps it was founded by advanced uh, visitors from a different uh, star system. Mm -hmm. And then I've put in a romance. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah that should be there. I mean, I was yes. reading some of, your, yes. some of the comments in uh, Amazon. Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's only been released less than a month. And oh. uh, I did make a mistake in the beginning with the formatting, a terrible mistake, which you've seen. Yeah. It was tiny, but then I unpublished the book and fixed that, and now it's gone up as the proper yeah. format. Luckily, that wasn't the case for the Kindle ones, but it's a steep learning curve. And it's taken me three years of pretty consistent writing. Mm. Although, as yes. you know, here I care for my elderly mother, oh, yeah, so yeah. It's not, I can't write full time, and I also am a serial renovator, gardener, swimmer. Mm. I can see, things. like you yeah. know, you do so many things. That's yes. why I said you're a person yeah. with a multiple talent bundled in one. Yes, I think we are one talent bundle in many. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, Lisa, it was really great. I mean, I wish we had more time to. Uh, talk about this book but uh, definitely like uh, I would like you to at least uh, what do you call uh, like let us know where to get it of, of course like perhaps nowadays for the it's moment it's available on Amazon and as I've discovered through you you can buy it in Amazon IN yeah. uh, for the Kindle version I don't know Amazon do a thing called print direct so you order it, and it's printed only once you ordered it. They don't keep stacks of books wow. available, uh, and that's printed in the country you order it. So I'm not sure if it's available in uh, India with Amazon. Print yeah, print. I wonder. I will ask her how yeah. India got it. Yeah, yeah, but I imagine be, yeah. the Kindle is 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 definitely um, available. And uh, so you can buy it. For the moment, it's across Amazon. I hope to, once I've kind of got this sorted, I hope to perhaps put it up on some other platforms. And I'm also going to learn how to do this weird thing called marketing, marketing. which I'm hopeless at. So um, we'll see how that goes. Uh, and I'm also, friends are encouraging me to do an audio book. Oh, okay, okay. And uh, I'm now, now it is, that is also in vogue, yeah. Yes, yes, very popular. And so I'll slowly put that together and I'll yeah. do it myself because I'm like that. I've had a kind of life where if I didn't do it, nobody did. So, wow. Mm. Uh, so, uh, Lisa, thank you so much for your time. Uh, and uh, as we go, like, okay, uh, I, I, I talk. Uh, to you a lot about my place yesterday or day before yesterday yes, right? yes. Uh, about Darjeeling Kalimpong and the kind of uh, culture we have uh, the kind of and culture basically now in a, uh, what do you call in a globalized uh, world is basically like we have our own but still overall culture of, is all, all, almost the same the mobile culture. Yes, it's <laughs> changed. When <laughs> I first went to India, let me just tell you, the first time I went to India was to go skiing. Ah. I spent a month skiing in Kashmir and we made a small film. Okay. The second time I went to India, I went to the Kulu Valley and ah, skied Kulu in Manali. Manali. Ah. Yes, also to make a film. So those were my first two experiences in the Himalayas and I, I loved it. Um, so... For me, the times I visited India, it's up a total of 10 times now, mostly for yoga, after the skiing. But I adore the diverse culture yeah. in the different parts. I haven't traveled much, but I've been to quite a few places there. And it's just, 
I just love the diversity, but also the interest. The people I've met are generally open and aware to a spiritual dimension in life that we exactly, don't yeah, often yeah. embrace in the West. And I really, that's something I really appreciate yeah. about appreciate about being in yeah. in India. Oh. Oh, thank you for reminding me the last question. In fact, I had, uh, <laughs> uh, in the draft, I had sent you this. Yes. Because I, myself, being from that place, I also am I'm amazed, you know, like, traveling from north, south, east, west, you go to various places, various dimension, various culture. Uh, it's, it's really super. Uh, so, I would like uh, you to give a message to our people back home. Uh, I see you doing such a lot of things. I see you cultivating... Uh, and we had uh, what was that? No, I we call it tulsi and thing in our uh, the place. Tea, basil. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. Yep, yeah. and uh, tomatoes. I have I have lots of things. About twenty. So like, vegetables. okay, I would mm. like you to give a message mm. to our youth, to our people back home, like uh, uh, about life, uh, celebrating life. I should say. Easy. Do what you love. Okay. Wow. Follow your heart. Don't Follow listen to uh, social uh, norms. Just your heart is the compass that will guide you where you need to go. So don't uh, get scared. Fear is the other half of excitement. So if you're feeling scared, turn it into excitement and take the plunge and do what you love because that's why we're here in my uh, experience. Wow. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lizzie. Mm. Uh, and my Priya Dasar Binda, today I'm going to shoot a lot of first overseas shooters. I'm going to shoot a lot of Nepal, and I'm going to shoot a lot of South Samandar, and I'm going to shoot a lot of Australia. I'm going to shoot a lot of my history. I'm going to shoot a lot of my समय तब आपको दिन आता है ना सुबह ना तो वहाँ ले आपने शेड्यूल मिला रहा पुनी आई यू रिशेड्यूल योर क्लासेस एंड ऑल और हम इस अंग्रेज़ से रिबेड वाला दिव्या वाणी प्रस्तुति में हम आज ऑस्ट्रेलिया बारे वाला सो करने में जो आज इसको लगे मौत आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक यू वेरी मच आई वाज़ जस्� Namaste. Namaste. Thank you so much. And I always end. I always end my show as a priest. I say, God bless you. Oh, God bless you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. <laughs>